Right, so I'm on the second vid of the first lesson for the second pack. My completed pack has got things in different orders, which properly puddled me down. Right, so let's have a look at this one. So we're still in lesson one. We're still going to try and get through this two lessons. So just because two things are correlated doesn't necessarily mean that they kind of happen. There's, um, there's not an example here, but there's a, there's a correlation fact that in America, um, there's a positive correlation between the amount of engineering degrees successfully obtained and the amount of pizzas bought. So, you know, that's not. So let's have a look at this example here. Um, so it says, for each of the three scenarios below, determine whether the two events which correlate are causal relationships. So they are, they are related to each other. So there'll be a positive correlation between the daily temperature and the number of ice creams sold. So the higher the temp, the more ice creams sold. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So that, I'd say, is causal. There's a causal relationship. Because it's warm and people enjoy the treats. Oh, here we go. It's not cheese, though. It's pizzas. Uh, I wasn't civil engineering, either. So we've got cheese and engineering. So that's not, that's not causal, is it? I don't make any sense whatsoever. That's not causal. Then the third one says, so the number of police stations and the number of um, supermarkets. Now I've done this in the past and people have argued that the bigger the town, the more supermarkets you're going to have. So likely you're going to have more police stations. So in a certain respect, it is actually yes, it could be cause, or there is both. But the problem is, it, both of those relate to a different factor. They're not directly related to each other, so they're not causal. So it's not causal because they're not directly related to each other. Uh, so not directly related to each other. But maybe both. Are independently related to the size of the city. There, there you go. So I appreciate the argument, but it's not that way. Right then, so it says uh, we could consider if there was a hidden third variable. So like that one above. Um, so reasons are place you have more supermarkets, reasons are place you have more police. And these are the reasons, and if you know, but the size of the city is in both of them there. Which is what we just said, isn't it? Right then, let's have a look at the next page. Potentially, is this the same as my page? Probably not. Right, so we've got regression lines now. So you've all done lines, you've all done straight lines, you've all done lines of best fit. Um, it's not quite a line of best fit, but it, 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 does the, um, it does the job. So we have, as it says, swap C to be A, swap M to be B, and on our calculators it has it as A plus BX. So it's just a slight rearrangement of what we used to. So these my gradients and A is my Y intercept. There. Right then. So you could be asked three things about a regression line. The units of gradients, so we talked, I'm sure we talked about this before. The gradient in context and what the Y intercept means. So it says, so I'm sure we've mentioned that before. Let's go to the second gym class. 
So the graph shows the amount of time spent revising for a group of students and the score they achieved. Well, they've got to put that in, haven't they, really? To show that if you spend more time working, you're going to get a better score. So what are the units of the gradient? So if you look up there for the gradient, the units are whatever the units of y per whatever the units of x. So the units of y are marks per, and then the units of x is hours. There. Interpret the gradient in context. So for uh, now we've got our gradient is 0.8. So for every one hour of revision time, our score should go up by 0.8. That's what that's kind of saying is it's not 0.8 over 1. So for every hour spent revising, our score should increase by 0.8. I don't want it increasing by 8. No. So the y intercept, which is 5, um, <laughs> we're kind of saying that's the score you get if you did no revision. So this is the score. So score you get with no revision. Right, okay. So it says interpret the PMCC in context. Well, so we look at the correlation now, but that doesn't make a lot of sense with it. So as revision time increases, your score increases. So as revision time increases. Score also increases. It's a positive correlation, isn't it? There, so that's the end of that page. <gasps> Keep going, Dave. Right then, so if you're using regression line to estimate the values, not given that original data set. So interpolation is guessing it within the data range, extrapolation is outside. I mean, in real life, people get paid hundreds of thousands of pounds a year to extrapolate, but we don't know what's going on, so it's all a bit guesswork, isn't it? So people don't like extrapolating. So what we've got here, so we're burning a type of wood as a source of energy, uh, and it, it's, it's, it's calorific value. So I've got a feeling the, um, the things are missing off it. So X is the moisture content. So the moisture content. And Y is the calorific value. Um, so if you look at that, it's going to be a strong negative correlation. So that's going to be, it's not quite, if you look, the, marks, the, the points aren't dead on the line. So it's going to be minus 0.99. It's pretty close to it, isn't it? Yeah. So B says the equation of the regression line is y equals minus 0.075. Interpret this in context then. Um, so let's have a look at... So we'll look at this then. So minus 0 0.0758 is the gradient. So for every percent increase, so for every, so this is the gradient. For every 1% increase, 